Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falco Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Today, it's going to be a Patreon game for Hyper One. You know this, dude. It's going to be a ZVZ here on Ancient Cistern. Bottom left, it's going to be Hyper One. Top right, it's going to be Nuria from the Flames Clan. Check out Hyper One's YouTube channel. Got a link in the description. He is a patron of mine at patreon.com slash Falcon Paladin for 10 bucks a month. Which gives him the right to send me any replay once a month, and I will cast it and put it on the main channel, and he sends me incredibly fun replays. He does play all three races, and he's got Diamond in all three races. So, Hatch first here in a ZVZ. Kind of risky, but not too risky these days with the meta. And just going to do a 16, 18, 17 timing here. Nuria is going to do a 17 hatch. Okay. So a 17 hatch and 17 gas. Um, nope, 18 gas. So 17, 18, 16. Nope, 17, 17, and yeah, that's 17. Okay, interesting. So, pool started after Hyper Ones, which means that he's up in workers here, Nuria. And he should have lings to defend if Hyper One is going to be aggressive with his worker, or his workers, his lings. Hmm. Just playing the meta here is Nuria. Sixlings on the way. 19 workers to 14 in favor of Nuria. And the spawning pool is finishing up. And Nuria can start sixlings as well. Oh, immediate baneling nest and two lings. As well as starting two queens. Yeah. I think Nuria's build order is not hard countering, but slightly countering Hyper One's build order. Okay. Interesting. And Hyper One is leaving his lings at home? Oh, maybe stockpiling them. Stockpiling them for a ling flood. At a time of his choosing. Just hiding them. Hiding them away. This is why you need to put overlords between your base and your enemy's base in a ZVZ. Because you never know when 30 lings will come streaming across the map and try to kill you. At a time when you just made a giant round of drones. <clears throat> and if you don't see him coming, you're going to lose the game. If you see him coming, uh, maybe you're going to lose the game anyway, but at least you'll have some time to, to prepare. Especially if you have a Baneling Nest, right? Right. So, double evolution chamber. Walling off here. Do we have a Roach Warren on the way? Usually walling off your natural means you're planning on going Roaches, and the walling off is to prevent this... Oh, gosh. This giant Ling Flood from killing you. Wow. That Ling went in and said, okay, no lair, no second gas, just a lot of Lings. All right, cool. Oh, gosh, was that a... Oh, no! We got... I heard it. We got to see it, though, don't we? Oh, my... This... Oh, Nuria. What did you... Yeah! Hyper One, no! You had... You were running away! You were go... What? Why did... Uh... Okay, so, um... So Nuria has this game won. It's over. That's it, man. You can't take a ginormous... 25 lings have died. You can't take a ginormous baneling hit like that. Two banelings, to be fair. <laughs> I think you have this game in hand. It's 22 to 14 workers in favor of Nuria. There's banelings here. There's a hard wall. There's queens back here as well. Hyper One is kind of chasing bad money after good here, but he is droning back up a little bit. Roach Warren finally starts for Nuria. I just feel like you want to start the Roachhorn a little bit sooner, but look, man, this isn't Dark versus Rainer or anything like that, right? These players aren't doing pro timings. They're not going to be as super crisp with what they're up to. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay. He's just sending Banes out to bait here. Oh, oh, that was actually not what you want to do. You don't want to A-move your Baneling. You want to move Command your Baneling into a group of Lings. And then hopefully detonate on the group of them. If you attack move with them and there's one Ling sitting there, then your Baneling will explode on one Ling, which is the least... Not the worst thing you can do with Banelings, but it's pretty bad. So yeah. 
I've played both these styles before, and I've won with them and lost with them. So yeah, man. Ow. Okay, again, that's another one ling for a bane ling trade there. Not exactly what you want to be seeing. Mm. Yeah, there you go. Pull those bane lings back. Don't let them fire on single lings. That's exactly how you don't want to do this thing. Why are these bane lings? Un oh no! Two bane lings exploded. Uh, if Hyperone can keep making amazing trades like this, he might actually be able to get back into this game. He's oh my gosh, that's another one. Nuria! Nuria, you were doing so well, Nuria. Now it's kind of falling apart on you a little bit. Your Bane control is struggling. Oh, you let two lings inside the house, too. All right, they're going to see the lack of a lair. They're going to see no second gas there. There's not even a gas at the second base, either. So if you're trying to make roaches, good luck with that. 31 to 28 workers. Hyper 1 has been droning up behind this a little bit, at least. Gets a couple lings inside the house, but... uh. Mm. Nothing really to worry about there, is it? So, army value is 13 to 6. Not exactly ginormous on both sides, but a bunch of units of... I mean, okay, 39 links have died from Hyper 1. Technically, only 5 units have died from Nuria, but those Bane links exploding, you know, one at a time on a single Zergling, that is a unit lost, man, and that is gas, too. Which gas is incredibly important in ZVZ and just in Zerg for Zergs in particular. So, Roach is out from Hyper 1, throwing up a spine to deal with potential incoming attacks. Nuria seems to be pulling back, though. Spreading creep, getting spines of his own up, and double expanding. Nuria, double extent expanding down the right side. Okay. That's what we're here for. God, that bailing hit. I mean, there are a lot of... Oh, smart. Hyper 1 canceled his once you recognize there was no attack forthcoming. I like that play. But man, a lot of players would just lose 25 lings to that Bane Ling hit and just GG. Just be like, I'm going to play another game now, thanks, bye. But not Hyper 1. Hyper 1 says, no, I can do this. I can make some good trades. I can catch up in workers, which he did. He's still down in army value, which is not ideal. Uh, sending roaches to chase after this overlord, I, you know, if they could shoot up, that'd be super useful. But as it stands, you're just allowing the overlord to scout how many roaches you have. And did he scout the lair timing? Certainly did, right? Yeah, saw that lair upgrading set. Okay, fancy. Oh, now he's checking for extra bases. Hyper 1. So smart. So, so smart here today. Uh, well, maybe not incredibly smart. He's going to check this as a base, but he's not going to check this one. Because who's going to double expand in his EVZ? Honestly, Nuri is playing crazy and getting away with it, which is kind of what StarCraft can be sometimes. If you feel crazy and take a massive risk and get away with it, oh, that's such a good feeling. But if you don't get away with it, then you feel stupid. And so that's what the risk is all about, right? You feel dumb and you probably lose. <laughs> because you spent so much on these bases, and then they died, that you're probably going to lose in the long run. ZVZ is a weird matchup, though, man. Sometimes you can have someone be very behind in the early game and then just have a nice catch-up into the mid-game that they follow into the late game, and then they can pull this thing off, which I feel like Hyper 1 kind of did, although, man, Nuri is up to 57 workers now. Really droned hard, man. Kind of instantaneously uh, saturated that third base. The fourth base isn't super saturated, but that's okay. Do the roaches have speed yet? No. Nuri is working on speed for their roaches. Overlord comes in for the scout, sees the lair is behind Nuria's. Hydralisk dead on the way. Scouting Overlord Zai, that's what they do. Ravagers coming up, man. Uh, takes a while. They made a Ravagers morph in 12 seconds instead of like 6 or 8 or whatever it was previously. So it's a slower one. And get in there before those Ravagers morph, maybe? Mm, ow, so that's a free Ravager for sure. Nice connection there. Now you got to dodge Corrosive Biles. And I mean, neither of them have... Roach speed, so it's a little bit harder to do that with these slow roaches. 57 to 64 army supply. Hyper 1 has a lead right now, but his economy is worse. And he doesn't have a third base. So this is Hyper 1. He needs to get some damage done here. Can he get some damage done with these roaches and these ravagers, or is he fated to die? I can't believe that Overlord is alive. Shouldn't be. Hyper 1 has the high ground, but... Ooh, some nice corrosive owl connections on those roaches. Again, if they don't have speed... It could be tough to dodge Corrosive Isles with Roaches. They're not the zippiest of units, but... Uh, oh my god, Corrosive Isles making more connections there, but just pure Roach against Ravager is actually pretty good. What you want is a combination of Roaches and Ravagers, so the, your Roaches can tank for your Ravagers. Oh man, these guys don't know what to do or where to go. This is not great control from Nuria. 
Come on, Nuria. Well, might as well kill this overlord with corrosive isles. Yeah, okay. And not dead. Ah! Couldn't even fulfill that purpose before they all die. Yeah, these ravagers are just kind of... Just go home, man. Just go home with those ravagers. Meet up with the rest of your crew. I don't know why you're bouncing around this side of the map. Hyper One's got a third base ready to pop here, but Nuria's got four and has for a while. 57 to 41 workers in favor of Nuria is massive. I think what Nuria probably needs to do is just make a bunch of Zerglings. So he did. Yeah, 10 lings on the way. Eight roaches, fine. Spending your cash is good. Yeah, I mean, Hyper One knows about the third, but he does not know about the fourth, which is going to be long-term problematic for him. Finally getting Glio Rig Constitution. Nuria's got a Lurker Den on the way, but it is a far bit from completing. So if you can just kind of hold at this point, right? Hold your high ground. Hold this area. Get the Lurkers out. If you have Lurkers and Hyper One doesn't, you might just be able to win this game, Nuria. You have a better economy. You have more bases. You have a better tech path right now. Upgrade difference is fairly minimal. Nuria actually has plus one melee. Everything else is even across the board there, as you can see, and down here too, thanks to the uh, WCS interface here, which to be fair, it's ESL now, but we're still using the WCS interface. Is that wrong? Should we not be doing that? Oh, Nuria sent a lot of overlords across the map. This could be a big problem for Nuria. Get overlord speed. Oh my gosh, get overlord speed. No, Nuria, Nuria getting supply blocked. The slow overlords, ow. Not really dodging at all. Okay, now they're kind of starting to take evasive maneuvers. Okay, that was a really nice dodge. Good split too, mind you. Splitting is what you want to do here. Oh, you don't cross the bile to hit any more than one of your overlords at a time if you can avoid it. Ow, okay, see one down. He's not getting, oh boy. Not even getting overlord speed. Come on, Nuria. Think about the possibilities with overlord speed. Neither is Hyper One. He's not learning any lessons from this. It's like, my slow overlords might actually die someday. Nah, my slow overlords are cool. Don't worry about it. But yeah, this is it. Nuri about time to get lurkers out. And, uh, well, there are overseers from Hyper One. So that's going to be useful here against these lurks. Nuria finally kind of saturating this fourth base. It's still 67 to 42 workers, though, in favor of Nuria. Is Nuria oversaturated anywhere? Not really, no. Just good saturation levels. And this is ZVZ, man. Suddenly, both players are effectively maxed out at 170, 180 supply. All right. Hyper One has a 2-2 upgrade versus a 1-1 upgrade here. But lurkers are amazing. Cross the Biles, mean a lot more dodging and maneuvering in ZVZ. And, all right, we're just going to kind of face mash in there, I guess. The Banelings are going to connect on Banelings mostly. And <laughs> Hyper One's up after that, 178 to 167 supply, but it's not a massive difference here. Yeah, ooh, this is why you bring Banelings with you, so the Lings aren't as effective. Massive engagement here. Yeah, just sort of target firing the hatch a little bit. The drones get pulled off, but that is a dead hatch, unless Hyper One chooses not to finish it off. Which he does before he retreats. Smartly done. Thinking that is his enemy's only other base and still not knowing that this exists. Oh boy, that's problematic. Now, this is where lurkers could be good in a counterattack style position. You position lurkers here, much more difficult. Oh, is he going to scout it? He does. He's like, ah, there's a fourth base since when, says Hyper One. Tearing and gnashing his teeth. He's tearing his hair and gnashing his teeth is where I'm going to go with that one. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. Well, anybody going to get a nidus? I feel like a nidus is fairly common at this stage of a of a ZVZ. Hyper One throwing up his own Hydra and recognizing if you don't have lurkers and your enemy has lurkers, you're just going to have a bad time. Historically, it's how it works. It's how it's always worked. Zerglings getting a beautiful run by. These are two armorlings, no attack upgrades. Ah, making a ton of banelings. Ooh, does he have centrifugal hooks? Nobody has centrifugal hooks. Why do we not care about baneling speed? You guys are crazy. Yeah, just send a few lings in there. Oh, why are there drones? Either way, yeah, those banelings didn't do exactly what they wanted to. Good spot, but Hyper One takes the distraction. Take some lurker at spines to the face. Not what you, not exactly what you want to do. But it's 177 to 139 supply. Hyper One looking good. 
Rosa Viles used to zone the army away. Hopper one getting a fourth base of his own. Nuria's third base is back up and rolling already, man. Smart. And a fifth base is up to bottom right. Ding! I don't know if Nuria's going to get away with this, but... Oh, Crosa Biling down. Someone's third hatch is tight. And yeah, he just barely gets it as he retreats. Bailing's getting wiped out by Crosa Biles. That's hilarious. Two lurkers. Turns out not exactly enough to stop this army from wandering in. Nice Crosa Bile wiping out one of the lurks. But man, those lurker spines weakening up a lot of Hyper One's army here. What you want to do is take the roaches that are all injured and turn them into Ravagers. You'll regain all of your HP. You'll get up to a full HP Ravager. Which is nice. Way better than just leaving these wounded roaches to run around and not do anything. Especially because you don't have burrow research and you can't heal them up that way. Spire on the way from Hyper One. He's like, well, maybe if I go a ton of mutas, I can catch Nuria off guard here. Because he doesn't have any Hydralisks, actually. He's just turning all of his Hydras into Lurkers. Which, you know, is cool and everything. But if 25 mutas show up, then suddenly your Lurkers are not providing as much value as you would like them to. Uh, man, but Nuria, man, expanding down this right side, Hyper One's fourth base, rolling 68 to 67 workers. Good droning up, Hyper One, at this stage, too. Really, really nicely played. He's doing this, kind of playing from behind, but he's playing catch-up pretty effectively, too. A giant Muta tech switch might be enough to do this thing. Scouting Ling. Uh, I thought Nuria recognized that was a changeling, but nope. Thought about it. Decided no. Spire's on the way from Nuria, too. I don't think Nuria got any scouting information on this. No, he doesn't know. He does not know that there's a hive on the way. Maybe he does. Or that I think that's the lair upgrade last time that Nuria was in here. So he's a bit behind on his intel. 192 to 172 supply. Hyper 1 is up. Income here is relatively even. It does... Seem to be favoring Hyper One a little bit. Oh, Nuria's army getting flank attacked. Two different directions here. Lurkers on the high ground trying to weaken this army up to where Nuria can actually win a battle in this situation. Yeah, Cross of Biles. Hyper, Hyper One does not care about your lurkers, it turns out. Yo! Big engagement there. Not enough lurkers to prevent that from really happening. Hyper One's got 14 mutas on the way, too. He's up 175 to 130 supply. And more lurkers are coming in from Nuria. He's just really making Nuria worry about the potential of more Roach Ravager attacks coming in. But the Mutas are unknown. Just kidding. Maybe not. Nuria is making some Corruptors. Perhaps he's ready. Perhaps he's totally ready for Mutas. He's been thinking about it a lot. Hyper One really wants this hatch, getting the non-guaranteed damage, but he does take it down. Nicely done. He's been sniping hatches for Nuria for some time here, and then just kind of retreating out, and his Mutas are going to be engaged. Here we go. Mutas. La 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 la. Target firing Lurkers. Target firing Ravagers. Army value is 90 to 78 in favor of Hyper One, and it is falling for Nuria. Down to 65, and suddenly, oh, uh, more Corruptors, I guess. These Overseers don't have speed, because neither player is interested in giving their Overlords or Overseers a speed upgrade today. But that's okay. There's other, oh, wait, hang on. Hyper One's, oh, did he just get it? Oh, yeah, maybe. Maybe that just came in. Nuria doesn't have speed for his, anyway. Roaches from Hyper, oh, yeah. I think Nuria might just be dead. What do you have the answer to the surprise 25 mutalisks? No, you don't. You have two corruptors, handful of queens. The safety spore down here, maybe. You're into that sort of thing. The mutas are killing overlords, but 110 to 68 total army supply. It is looking tough. Looking tough to tough. Rough to tough here. Corruptors are pretty good against mutas, but not when you're out number 25 to 1. And that is a Corruptor Death Sound right on cue. And that's a GG! Nuria taps out and Hyper Wad is the winner with his surprise Mutalisks. Ah, that was so good. That was such a good game. Great back and forth. Again, I do feel like most players, if they lose 25 links to a Baneling hit at the first start of the game, they're just going to be like, well, guess that's that. Uh, we'll just start another ladder game here. It'll be fine. <laughs> 
But no, not Hyper One. He kept fighting. He went on put the pressure on Nuria, training single wings for Banelings a few times, making Nuria not feel safe at home. Nuria out expanded Hyper One, but Hyper One was able to just have better control in his fights. There weren't quite enough lurkers from Nuria to dissuade giant Roach Ravager attacks into Nuria's positions. That was a massive problem. 17 lurkers went down. Four hatcheries died. 26,000 total resources were lost from Nuria compared to only 17 from Hyper One. Yeah, that's crazy. That is some crazy impressive, impressive cost efficiency for a ZVZ. For sure. 34 drones died from Nuri. Not a single drone died from Hyper One. That's a huge deal if you're looking for reasons why he won. That's a big one. So, yeah. And then the surprise mutas at the end. That was awesome. I mean, <laughs> gotta say, I've definitely had games like that myself where I'm just, I'm stuck on Roach Ravager, sprinkling some lurkers in, and then bam, 30 mutas show up, and you're like, ah. Well, yes, I can't handle that. GG, good sir. And that's what Nuria said. GG'd. Hyper One tapped out, and Hyper One goes away with the win. Nicely done. Pretty fun ZVZ. Pretty nice back and forth, for sure. So, neat stuff, and that's going to be it from me. This has been Falcon Paladin, coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void and a Patreon cast for Hyper One. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch. All at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself. Us.